Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today, my M3 Competition X Drive is going to have a very, very special upgrade. But I thought I would combine this video with my 2,000 mile update. In fact, the car is basically just about to clock over 2,100 miles, which isn't that much distance considering I've had this car almost three months. In fact, my blue one think accumulated about 5,000 miles in the same amount of time so this car hasn't been used as much as I was hoping but I've got lots of things planned with it in the future including a couple of Euro trips and track days. The main reason it hasn't really been used much is the M2 has been seeing a lot more action. I've had the 730D for the past five or six weeks and absolutely loving that car so I've been using that for a lot of daily duties because it's just so comfortable especially in the surrounding roads like these where I live road conditions aren't perfect by any means and the 7 well it's just <laughs> it is 7 heaven that car uh, and I've now got an M240i long termer that I've had for a couple of weeks already so when you factor in uh, all of those cars plus my other half has got an S3 um, well, the M3 has kind of been sitting dormant for the past few weeks or so, if not months. I've actually been away a lot. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll know what I'm talking about. I've taken about 20 flights this year already, and we're only at the end of May. So you can understand why I've had very little time to drive and appreciate this car. Although each time I do get in it, like today, I realise what I'm missing and I realise what an amazing all-round package this car is. In terms of what this car's been like to live with in the past almost three months and 2,000 odd miles, well, it's been an absolute joy and every time I get behind the wheel, I re-appreciate what this car can do with its X-Drive system. But the good thing with the M3 and M4 X-Drive is, with the press of a few buttons, you can revert it back to a rear-wheel drive only car, and it becomes extremely playful, just like my previous M3 rear-wheel drive in blue. And I love that adaptability of it because it's basically a very sure-footed, let's call it normal daily when you want it to be, albeit with these carbon buckets that always remind you in, you're in something very special. Um, but when you get it on your favorite back road, whether you're in four wheel drive or rear wheel drive, it just becomes an absolute animal. And in fact, my uh, favorite default setting, my M1 button, if you like, is four wheel drive sport. So it sends more power and torque, a lot more power and torque to the rear axle, I think up to about 80%. Um, and all of the traction controls switched off. I have the chassis in comfort because I'm surrounded by poor quality roads and comfort is still quite stiff in these cars, not quite as stiff as the older F uh, series generation. Steering in comfort because sport's just too artificial and heavy. Um, and I have the braking system in sport as well because I like that sort of uh, initial um, aggressive bite if you like. It feels really, really good and really, really positive certainly doesn't feel like you're driving a car that's circa 1800 kilos it really slows down very quickly and it also speeds up very quickly it's just a real fast car that does defy all sorts of physics a couple of weeks ago i popped down to see mike and motec and they actually fitted um, some ibac lowering springs on the front axle i believe they're 20 millimeter lower because as you may be aware, these cars do look like they sit quite high on the front. A lot of that has to do with the fact that it has a staggered wheel set up, so 19's in the front, 20 on the rear, but it does just sit very strangely high on the front. The rear is perfect out of the box. Okay, I've got 10 mil spaces all around, and I think that is perfect, 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 but <laughs> the rear sits really well, whereas the front just sits a little bit high. So I got him to fit those springs for aesthetic purposes, so the car looks a bit better. There's a truck talking to me somewhere. But also because when I was up at Suspension Secrets with Matt recently, 
Um, he suggested that I got some lowering springs fitted to the front axle because if you can remember and if you've seen that video, um, the negative camber on the front axle is actually quite limited. It's only at about 1.3, whereas my rear wheel drive car was at about 1.8. And lowering the front of the car will give you naturally a bit more negative camber. I'm not sure by how much, probably by 0.1 or 0.2. So it might be up to about 1.5 now, uh, which in turn will give it a better sort of front end especially when I really push it, if I take it over to Europe or if I take it on a track day, it should just help with that. So two reasons for them. Also, they fitted some, I think they're called carbon arch guards. Um, something that in the past I've never really considered or thought about, but it was a last minute sort of purchase when I saw them there. And they're really attractive. They look good. They don't look too obvious. Obviously being carbon, they kind of suit a lot of the rest of this car because it has the carbon exterior pack. Um, but again, most importantly, they are functional. They actually stop or reduce um, some of the stones that come up out of the wheel arches and fly down the side of the car. And no matter if I've got PPF, which I do down the lower sills, etc., there's always gonna be a stone that finds its way onto one of the doors or whatever. And all it takes is one nasty chip and yeah, they kind of at least pay for themselves. So yeah, put them on and instantly you could hear stones and stuff hitting them. And uh, and yeah, you're grateful for the fact that you've had them fitted. So massive thanks to uh, Motec Performance for sorting the springs and those carbon arch guards. I think they're a really nice addition to this car. I'm currently driving through Aylesbury on my way to see Russ at Swift Performance because he's had some fresh Michelin rubber delivered to him to be fitted to my wheels that are sitting just behind my shoulders. I'm sure you've noticed them already. I'm very, very excited about these wheels. In fact, I couldn't hold my excitement back and I posted a little video on my Instagram a few days ago of these and that I wouldn't normally do because obviously it dilutes from this video. So let's get to Swift Performance and check out the wheels. There you go guys, hopefully you love the wheels as much as I do. I can't believe and get over how good they look on this car. Obviously, I've had the wheels themselves for about the past week and I've been dribbling over them, but seeing them with Michelin tires on the car is just something else. And I'm sure the camera doesn't quite do them enough justice uh, with this paint because Dravic Grey has a bronzy fleck underneath and in the sunshine that fleck from the paint is exactly the same color as these wheels so they complement each other so so well i love the design of these they're made by a company called edelweiss uh, in germany and they are top quality um, lightweight forged alloys 
Uh, they make two versions or designs. These are the LT3s, uh, designed for the new G series, G80 M3, G82 M4, and I'm certain that they'll fit the incoming G87 M2. Uh, and they also do the LT5, uh, which is designed for F-series cars, so like my M2 competition, the F80 M3 and the F82 M4. Um, and they're equally as nice, arguably nicer. Um, can you believe it? So head over to uh, Edelweiss's website. There'll be a link in the description below um, and you can configure your own wheels. They do about 10 different finishes, different style um, wheel center caps. They've actually sent me a different style one or a different color combination um, if I want to play around with them. And honestly, the quality of these wheels just next level. Like I said, I've had them for about the past week <laughs> and I haven't been able to put them down. I've just been playing with them and touching them. Um, also knowing that they're never gonna be that clean uh, as they were when they were new. Uh, but now they're on the car, they just look so good. I've gone for a 20 inch square setup. Uh, you can go 20, 21 on the rear. Um, but I went for 20 all round, and I think they fit really, really nicely. Uh, I've got 285 section PS4S's on the front now, and 295 on the rear, so I'm gonna have plenty of grip. Um, obviously, I'm gonna keep the original wheels for when this car gets traded in for the Touring in 10 months time or whatever it is. Uh, and I'm also gonna put some fresh Cup 2s on my original wheels, so if and when I do take this car out on track, I'll use the original wheels, the smaller wheel and the bigger tyre because that's probably going to operate and work better on track. Plus I've got a couple of pairs of cups in storage um, which are basically crying to go on this car when I do eventually take it out on a circuit somewhere. Um, but yeah, over the moon about these wheels, really am. Uh, in terms of, well, ride quality and feel, it's very hard to say. Obviously I've got these old wheels behind me so I'm taking it very easy because I don't want them moving around and damaging the interior or taking my head off um, but in terms of ride quality it actually feels pretty much identical maybe I've lost the fraction on the front axle just because the wheels are slightly bigger and the tire profile is slightly smaller um, to allow it to fit in the wheel arch there's absolutely no rubbing uh, I've tried like full lock maneuvers forward and backwards um, and it's working very well. Uh, massive, massive thanks to Russ and Tim at Swift Performance today um, for fitting the lovely Michelin tires onto these beautiful wheels. And uh, yeah, thanks for just getting everything right, setting the car up. Of course, I forgot to bring my standard length uh, wheel nuts because these wheels had 10 mil spacers, so they had extended wheel nuts on them. Um, these wheels don't need spacers they're set perfect uh, but of course then you need the standard wheel nuts which are in storage or at home somewhere so thankfully Russ and Tim bailed me out of that one um, so yeah couldn't be happier I will do a proper video review of this car uh, maybe when I take it to the Alps in a month's time or so um, but yeah as it stands at the moment I'm gonna get it home I've got a crazy few weeks ahead of me unfortunately that don't involve this car so <laughs> I'm just gonna have to look back at the photos of my phone today that I took and get excited about using it in a few weeks time um, but yeah massive thanks to Mike at Motec uh, Nick at Motec as well obviously a uh, huge thanks to uh, Edelweiss for sending out these unbelievably gorgeous wheels um, and all the help they've been so helpful uh, with everything. I mean, I changed my mind probably 10 times over the last couple of months, which finish to go with. Um, and I hope that you lot, most of you lot, um, approve and uh, agree that these look really good in the car. Uh, massive thanks to Russ at Swift Performance. Huge thanks to Michelin Tires, of course, for sending me out um, yet another set of tires. So thanks to Dan and Michelin. And uh, I think that ties up just about all of my thanks for this video. I'm gonna go before I curb my new wheels down this narrow street with that nasty curb on the left. 
I will see you at another video very, very soon. Cheers.